666. According to a report in Bloomberg, Uber's woes continue in Saudi Arabia. Wait times for cars have soared since the government enforced a rule last year that all drivers must be Saudis. While that's part of a broad push to create jobs for citizens, it ruled out the millions of foreign migrants in the country. Richard, we were we took Uber in Saudi Arabia when it first launched there. I mean, like really, really early on. And it was very interesting because it had a very unregulated feel to it, um, yeah. <laughs> to put it very nicely. Um, well, go, go ahead, ahead, please. No, no, no. no it was speaking to your point. One of the regulations that Uber's struggling with is that the government has required that there no be no no cars 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 can be no older than five years. That was not the case no. when we were taking <laughs> Ubers. <laughs> I think that was the case. That was I think it was um, you know in that situation it was cars were were not required to have seat belts was the was a reigning you know rule of uh, thumb for Uber when we were taking it or for, yep. when we first took it. I would say maybe half the rides we took in Saudi had no seatbelts in the back, which was very concerning when the driver was holding up a phone, driving with one hand, and the phone, like I guess, was on the, it was either on a, a phone call, but um, you know, just downtown in Riyadh, it can get a little hairy when traffic is really bad, and that was just a very, um, you know, very interesting thing. But w- what I like about this story, what I think is interesting about the story, you, you have a lot of labor stuff wrapped up in this, and. It's good that Saudi Arabia is trying to get their citizens to to take these jobs. We did talk a little bit earlier about an Uber success story for Saudi women. Um, the four year impact of the Wasul program, you know, getting Saudi women to work without charging them the full fare really worked out, um, which is one of the biggest uh, public private partnerships that Uber has ever done. Um, and last year, Uber revealed that it revealed that 50% year on year increase in female drivers in Saudi Arabia working for Uber, which is really cool. I mean, you know, women just recently, I mean, not recently, but, you know, 2017, 2018 got the right to drive in general. And so to see that is very cool. Um, I should also add as well that um, Saudi women can uh, request that their passengers not be male, um, I believe, which is also interesting. So very very cool. It must be interesting to be an Uber official in Saudi Arabia. Well, and we talked about it last week, uh, an episode, I believe one of the yellows was on Nitakat and the Saudization of electronics stores. Mm-hmm. And they've been a whole raft of, of sectors that, that the Saudis have moved to to reform regulations and, and require Saudization. And we talked about it then. It's a case of, you know, uh, one step back to achieve two steps up. Mm-hmm. It's if you you know if you're gonna if you're gonna require the Saudis be uh, employed in certain sectors and certain jobs, you're gonna have to understand that you're gonna be hiring uh, employees that are a little more expensive and less experienced. It's interesting that they are not doing a solution that involves some sort of surge situation where if you're not a, a citizen, you can work for Uber, but only in the event that there's an increase in demand. Um, that is an interesting point, but again, for them, they're they're sticking to a principle. We we have to create jobs for our our native population. Mm-hmm. This is this is uh, you know priority number one. And so when you look around the economies, and 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 it's you know we have this is a good news because we have Saudis driving. You didn't have this before. Yeah. And plenty of Saudis who are looking to drive Ubers. Uh, clearly, there's a driver shortage, but and it's also been an a, uh, an access to employment for women. So, it's it's good and bad. It's not it's never an unalloyed good, mm-hmm. uh, but clearly the the end result they're hoping for will will serve their diversification and 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 job creation plans. If there was ever a market that was ready for disruption, it was Saudi Arabia and especially Riyadh. Richard, our trips there before Uber were very, very uh, hairy and really, I mean, trying to get around Riyadh. They're building a massive new metro, which will transform the capital. But trying to get around Riyadh before Uber was not easy. Um, And driving in Saudi Arabia is not for the faint of heart. It's gotten a lot better, as I understand it. But um, it's a small city that got big. And mm-hmm. you know, it was always designed around a car, and it's just uh, yeah, they're they're trying to rethink everything in terms of their urban design. But it's hard when you have a legacy, a concrete legacy, pun intended, uh, of that size and enormity. 
Um, I will say that we did take some very nice Ubers. Um, I don't want to totally besmirch all Ubers, but we did have some very nice Uber rides there, um, which were great. And in, in some cars that may be a little too nice for Uber here in the United States. Yeah, seriously. Um, <laughs> interesting. <laughs>